the failure of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank, the second and third largest bank failures in US history, has had significant impacts on the economy. And ripple effects continue, with the focus now turning to other regional banks and whether more of them might fail. Of course, I'm watching this situation closely to gauge what impacts there may be on the economy in general, but more importantly, what the impacts might be on the ownership housing sector. And impacts have already been felt with the yield on 10-year bonds, which mortgage rates are essentially based on, plummeting 45 basis points in just four days. And this allowed the 30-year fixed rate mortgage to fall from 7% to just over 6.5%. But the longer-term impacts of the housing market following the crisis, well, they remain uncertain. As I record this video, a consortium of banks has stepped in to support First Republic Bank here in the US. Credit Suisse has been taken over by UBS, and financial markets appear somewhat less concerned about the likelihood of a global banking crisis. But bond yields have stabilized at levels well below those seen before the crisis started. And this suggests that uncertainty persists. And although this is a positive for housing, lower bond yields equal lower mortgage rates, there are other factors that could impact housing. So my attention has now turned to the Fed. The banking crisis had forced the Fed to consider how advisable it would be to raise interest rates by a full half percent following their meeting on the 21st and 22nd of this month. Up until the crisis started, a half-point increase was the market's consensus, but I'm sure they are now considering a smaller quarter-point increase, and maybe thinking of leaving rates alone for the time being. And it's their decisions that will have impacts on the housing sector as well as the broader economy. Regardless of what the Fed does, I expect tighter financing conditions as banks raise lending standards in order to safeguard their liquidity positions, and this would further retrench credit. It's ironic to me that, on one hand, tighter credit could actually help the Fed bring down inflation. But on the other hand, tighter credit conditions, well, they increase the likelihood of a recession. And if tighter credit leads us into a recession, well, the Fed would end up responding by lowering rates. This would be a positive for mortgage rates and the housing sector. But any more severe economic contraction than the market anticipates well, that could act as a disincentive for home buyers, therefore being a negative for the housing market. All in all, it's quite the conundrum. I'll be in touch again if things change, which I'm pretty sure they will.